In Creole Parametric, you can use the GD&T Advisor to apply geometric dimensioning and tolerancing to your models. In a previous video, I started showing the demo from PTC's help section on how to apply GD&T using the advisor, and we created the first three datums, the datum feature symbols for A, B, and C. In this video, I'm going to continue on with applying the GD&T to this part. So anyhow, the next thing that we're going to handle is the pattern of holes. So I will start by clicking on the tolerance feature. And once again, I am prompted to select some geometry. I will select the surface for one of the holes. Then we have the add feature dialog box, and it's got the surfaces from the hole that I selected. But you'll notice that there's also an option that's automatically checked to add the entire pattern. I will click on the OK button. And now we get the dashboard. And the first thing that I will do is change the name of the feature. And the demo recommends that we call it Fastener Hole. So I will type in that as the name. And for the scheme, it is a tolerance size. That is good. And we're going to use the position tolerance. Let's change this to a value of 0 0.2. Hit the Enter key. One thing is still not completed. By the way, you'll notice that if it's not completed, you won't have the green check mark to proceed on. We need to specify whether we want to have regardless of feature size, max material condition, or least material condition. Let's use our max material condition. Now everything is good. You'll notice that for this one, we do not have datum feature automatically checked because we already have a datum reference frame. If you take a look at the feature tree, you can see it here with A, B, and C. So anyhow, everything is good here. And oh yeah, one other thing I wanna mention, let me hit the check mark for this one. If you take a look, at the symbol in the feature tree for this one, it's got the symbol for a pattern, but there's a little icon on it that looks like basically a chain. So this indicates that it is linked to the feature in the model. So if the feature in the model ever updates, then this one will update as well. And speaking of which, let me locate this in the model. You can see that it is located down there. The annotation is located underneath where I'm currently looking. So let me grab this and then just drag it. I'm going to drag it up so you can see it uh, away from some of the other different dimensions and geometric tolerances and datum feature symbols. Okay, so anyhow, that is good for that one. And I still have show hide constraint state turned on from the previous demo. You can see that the Holes are now showing up in green. To take care of everything, we can do that by applying a default tolerance. And the way that you do that is by clicking on the Edit Properties icon. And this opens up the Edit Model Properties dialog box. And there are two different tabs in here. We have Dimensions and Tolerances. So you can see that we have our Tolerancing Standard selected here. But the second tab is Properties and Notes. And here are some of the default notes that are provided for you. And one of them is for a general profile. I will select it from the not displayed column. Then we have a button to add it to the displayed column. And we can see that the text of the notes is, unless otherwise specified, a general profile tolerance applies to all surfaces. Let me select the name of the note from the displayed list. You'll see that now we have a field where we can enter in the general profile tolerance. And so we will use a value of 0 0.3, hit the enter key, and now I will click the OK button. Actually, before I click the OK button, notice that there is a note that some of the services of the design model are not constrained. Well, as soon as we click the OK button, that note goes away. And because of the show hide constraint state, all the surfaces that have that constraint applied to them are colored in sort of like this darkish blue color. But anyhow, let me turn that off just so that everything goes back to the gray color. Again, we have no notes in the advisor tree, but you can still proceed on 
adding additional geometric tolerances for anything that the general tolerance doesn't apply to. And of course, you can see that we have a note automatically created as a flat to state annotation in the graphics area. So let's add in a couple of other geometric tolerances and we'll do one for this surface in the model. I will click on tolerance feature and then we'll pick this surface and it's got the surface highlighted in the list and it's using it as a planar surface, which is the only choice. So now I will click on the OK button. And so for this one, we are going to call it the top plane. And for the scheme, instead of a geometric tolerance, you have two other choices, an offset dimension or a size dimension. For this one, we will use a size dimension. You'll notice that the interface for the dashboard changes. If we go to the dimension tab, we can see that it is using a width dimension. Here is the ID of the dimension. And there is the value of the dimension. If I click on this, this is actually a button. It will open up the edit dimension dialog box. And right now it has a nominal value for the tolerance mode. You can go to the drop down list and change it to limits plus minus or plus minus symmetric. And it's got a default value of 0.01. .01. There are also some boxes that we can check for independency or statistical tolerance, but we'll just use plus minus metric and click on the OK button. We no longer need the dimension tab, so we can collapse that and everything is good. We are not going to make this a datum feature or have it datum from targets. So I will hit the check mark. And let's see, where are you? Let's see. Oh, there we go. Sometimes they show up based on how they were initially defined in the model or defined in the sketch or defined in the feature inside the model. But I will select it and drag it so that we can see it appear over here. All right, so that is good for this one. We do have a warning that the form tolerance must be smaller than the specified size tolerance. Eh, I'm just going to leave that in there. Let's now go and apply a, another tolerance to a, another surface. And so for the next one, let's go to tolerance feature. We're going to, going to use this particular surface, the end of the shaft. And for this one, uh, we're going to use a, yeah, again, planar surface as well. Click the OK button. And for this one, let's call it the shaft end plane. And instead of geometric tolerance, well, we can change it to the other two choices. And size dimension doesn't apply in this situation. A size dimension is for a feature of size. That would be in a situation where uh, and if you read in the help section, it defines the width between parallel, opposed, and overlapping planar surfaces. But this is not a feature of size uh, because the parallel planes, they're not opposed, or, or excuse me, um, the offset dimension is used to define the distance between parallel planes that are not opposed or not overlapping. So anyhow, in this particular situation, we should use offset dimension. And once again, we can go to the dimension tab and here it says we're using it as an offset. We can click on the box, the block around the value of the dimension. And once again, change it to plus minus symmetric. Oh, wait, let me see. I'm, I think I need to change this to point one and click on the OK button. So that is good. I will hit the check mark. And so I think that's the problem I'm having in this particular situation. So let me select this and edit dimension and let's change this. Ah, that was the warning I was getting and click on the OK button. And so now that warning goes away, but we do get a warning that the dimension is ambiguous for this eight dimension. So in this situation, let me select the annotation and this opens up the 
dashboard for the dimension tab and we have references over here and that's where you can define the different semantic references and we have our first dimension reference and we can specify that this is going to be the origin of the dimension and then click on the OK button and now we still have the warning so we have to go to the update button and the warning goes away so anyhow by doing all that we have all the geometric tolerances applied to the model. At this point, I could go about cleaning up the annotations so they're not so overlapping. Maybe I'm going to grab this one and drag it so it appears underneath the model. You know, I'd figure out what orientation I would want to use to display all these different things. Uh, let me grab this other one. Sometimes I can get very addicted to cleaning up and modifying and getting everything the way that I want to look. Oh yeah, one last thing to check out in this one. We can click on Show Hide Constraint State and you can see the different surfaces that we have in there. And we have some that are fully constrained in the green and we have the ones in the darker blue that are constrained by the surface profile. And the ones that we manually applied the additional tolerances to now appear with the green instead of the dark blue like they were before. So anyhow, there you have it. That is PTC's demonstration for using the GDNT Advisor.